Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. So now finally we will start writing the code now that we have a clear plan. So even when writing the code, what I would do is first figure out the input arguments to my function and then the return type, right? So the input argument in this case is a array of uh, numbers and the output is also an array of numbers. And then I'll come up with some test cases. So I have some test cases ready. So let's just add them. So I have this function which will repeatedly call my main uh, uh, function which does the actual logic with different inputs. Okay. So these are the different inputs. One and then this empty array and then this array and uh, so on. And for each one of these inputs I also have the expected output. So if this is the input then I want this to be the output. And uh, if we have like an empty array as the input, the output is also an empty array and uh, so on. So this is like, finally we have like an interesting case here where uh, if this is the uh, input array, then the output array is 2,3. So these are all the test cases. And uh, I will iterate through all these test cases and call the same uh, function which does my logic one after the other with different inputs. So I'm calling, uh, so in this particular line of code, I'm just iterating through all the values in my uh, inputs and expected outputs array okay so let's just call this i will share this with you guys so that uh, you can spend more time uh, reading and understanding this so let me save my file so i can see initially the input was this and then this is the actual output returned by our function and this is the expected output so i can see the final case the output is the input itself because that's what we are returning now we have not written any logic yet and uh, the expected output is 2 comma 3 so now we have to go and fill up the logic so the advantage of following this approach is now that we have the test cases you can gradually write the code for your function and test it simultaneously with all the different test cases so if you are going wrong immediately you will know that something is not right okay Okay, so now let's go back to our plan, get the pseudo code and then translate it into actual working code. Okay, so this is the code to uh, just generate all the sub arrays. The final expected output is to just return one sub array which whose sum is the highest but let's worry about it later. For now let's generate all the sub arrays. Right? I remember we had like uh, two steps in our plan. Generate all the sub arrays and then the find the one with the uh, largest sum. So we are focusing only on this part now. Okay. All right, let's see if this works. In fact, this more or less looks like JavaScript. So we can just copy paste it for now. And then we want to return all the sub arrays. So now let's just run it with uh, our inputs because we have like too many test cases. I can probably remove a couple of them for now. And uh, I can also add some console.logs just for debugging. And then uh, remove this console.log because I, I'm, I'm sh I know that the output is not going to match the expected output. So I'm just uh, checking whether this subroutine works fine. Okay. In this case, all sub arrays is this. Okay. We have like a error here. All the sub arrays does not include all the sub arrays. So let's just see what's happening. Oh yeah. We just wrote this pseudo code, right? Array of 0, comma j. So we should find out the actual javascript function to get all the elements uh, starting at a particular index and then ending at a particular index so now is the time you can use google find out whatever uh, function does it for you so let's just try it out so if i want to get all the elements from 0 to 2 uh, there is something called as the slice uh, method which works on arrays in javascript so if i do 0 comma 2 i get all the 
value starting from 0 uh, till 2 minus 1 right it, it does not include the last index so that's how the JavaScript slice function works so you can see here so we may have to slightly modify our uh, i and j values to make it work so we want a slice from i to j so let's just test if it works okay so if the input is 1 comma 2 comma minus 3 comma 4 we get 1 1 2 1 2 minus 3 and then we have 2 2 minus 3 we are missing the last value right so that's because uh, the javascript slice uh, method does not consider the uh, final element so there are a couple of ways to fix it i guess uh, one th one way we can fix it is to add uh, one to this okay now it looks better we have like one one two one two minus three one two minus three four okay so yeah one important thing to remember is that you know we wrote just like a few lines of code and immediately tested them right we just wrote one two three four five six lines of code and immediately tested whether this part of the code is working fine so that is another strategy you should be using which is write three four lines of code just print all the variables make sure everything is fine because otherwise if you have like 20 lines of code then it will be difficult to debug it you don't know which line uh, the error was if there is a error right you have to check all the lines of code but if you're debugging small amounts of code then it is easier okay so that is one very important strategy Okay, so now we have like all the subarrays. Looks good to me. Now we want to find the subarray with the maximum uh, sum. So sometimes, you know, when solving complex problems, one thing you can do is split up your code into smaller functions. So what I will do is take all this logic and put it in a function, in a different function. I call this function as all subarrays, which takes the array and then returns it. You will see the advantage of this soon. Okay. So now I have like all uh, subarrays. I can call it with this, right? I'll call it uh, subarrays. Now the next step is to find the subarray with the maximum sum, right? Now I can call another function which does that. So you know, find uh, max subarray and pass the result of the previous function as the input to this function, right? And this is the final result and then I can return the result. You can see that I did not even write the logic for this yet. I'm just assuming that it will work. So this way I have like a clear idea of where I need to go. Okay, so let me fix the spelling. Okay, now I'll write this function. Function find uh, max subarray. And the input is like an array of arrays, right? So I have like all the subarrays here. Now what I can do is for let array of uh, subarrays, I want to find the one with the maximum. So this is a fairly simple piece of code. So that's why I won't spend time writing pseudo code. But even if this part of the code is difficult, then you have to write the pseudo code and then follow the same approach that we have been following so far. So initially I have like, you know, like the maximum, I'll initialize it to uh, negative infinity. And then I have like a max uh, subarray and it's like an empty array. Now when iterating through each array, I will check whether its sum exceeds this max sum. If it does not, then I don't have to do anything. Else I will set the max sum to its sum, right? Now I want to find the sum of all the elements in this array. Okay. So even now it is something that can be extracted out into a function, right? So I'll create a function called as array sum and find the array so find the sum so array sum. i'll use plain old javascript for this so for let i equal to zero so there are other ways to solve this problem you can use uh, reduce and so on but let's not worry about it so anyway the most important point is i'm splitting up my logic into various functions so that uh, you know the, this code does not become uh, too complicated for me to understand okay and also debug if there are any issues okay and now i'm finding the array sum 
okay so now what i'll do is i'll just test whether this array sum itself works okay so i'll call this array sum and pass like one two three so once again we are following the approach where we are writing few lines of code and testing whether it works so we got six if i add four here we get ten right so now i'm sure that this part of the code works fine and if there is an error i know that the code the error is not in this line it is it may be somewhere else okay okay so now uh, let's sum equal to this if uh, sum greater than max sum then i have to set max sum to this new value of sum and then max sub array as this particular array and then finally i will return the max sub array okay. so no, now once again we will uh, call this function and uh, test whether it works okay. so you can see that i am not testing the main function i am just testing this part of the code now i already tested this part of the code now i will just test this one separately so that if there is an issue i can isolate it into this particular uh, part of the problem so the input is like a 2d array right which contains all the sub arrays so this can be anything right so let's just test if it works okay so the maximum sub array is 3 comma 4 which is the expected result now i have like another test case okay so in this case this is the largest this is the sub array with the largest sum so everything is going fine and yeah all the pieces are in place we have taken the output of the first step as the input for the second step i think everything should work now fingers crossed let's hope it works now i can finally test it with all the uh, test cases okay let me remove all the console.logs except this one okay so in this case you know i think everything seems to be working so far uh, one another thing one other thing i usually do is i'll check i want to uh, automate the process of checking as well now right now i'm manually checking whether this 2 comma 3 is equal to this 2 comma 3 right so for that we can have like a helper function so like r uh, array is uh, equal to check whether whether two arrays are equal or not so we have like uh, a and b as the two arrays and uh, first thing we can do is if a dot length it's not equal to b dot length we will return false and then if uh, array of i is not equal to uh, uh, b of i we once again will return false and finally if everything is fine we return true and now what we can do is uh, instead of printing uh, you know the act uh, the actual output and the expected output in a, maybe in addition to that we can also print whether the test case uh, passed or failed right so if uh, our array is equal actual output and the expected output so the actual output is the output written by a function and expected output is the known result right so if uh, the arrays are equal we can say console.log uh, test case passed okay. else we can say console.log test case uh, failed we can even use console.error if you want to get a nice error message so you can see for all the cases the test cases are passing cool so that completes uh, uh, this series of videos so this is the overall approach that you can use to solve problems so to summarize uh, you know first understand uh, the problem then come up with the logic and then write the pseudo code make sure that everything is fine and only then start coding and even within uh, the coding aspect uh, write some uh, test cases and uh, run your uh, code after typing uh, 
every like three four lines and then uh, split up your code into smaller pieces right so the advantage of this as you saw here is that you know we did write a lot of code but since they're all in small functions we were able to test them individually and we did not spend much time debugging so that completes uh, the series of videos we will have uh, uh, we will do more pra practice on uh, uh, this strategy we will do more uh, case studies um, so yeah that completes uh, this series bye